Hey guys, Smelling Roses here, and welcome to another episode of Wilderness Navigation. Hey guys, welcome back to my Wilderness Navigation series. And in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about measuring distance on your topographic map. So guys, take a look at this example map we have here. This happens to be a very nice topographic map of the Linville Gorge Wilderness in western North Carolina. So just to take one example, let's say we wanted to hike this Devil's Hole Trail. You can see that it's clearly shown on the map, its route, and it's listed with its trail name and a trail number 244. And as many maps will have, you can see a list of the trails, and if we look here, 244, there's the Devil, Devil's Hole Trail. It happens to be 1.5 miles in length. It's considered very difficult and very primitive. So we can use this information to help us plan our trip if we're thinking of hiking that trail. However, what if our map does not have that detailed information or perhaps we want to do a loop and uh, maybe we're going to use sections of trails but not the entire trail and we need to get an estimation of the total distance that we're going to hike. Uh, how can we do that? Well, let's take a look at uh, at least one idea. Okay guys, so let's talk a little bit about measuring distance on your topographic map. Now take a look at this map we have here. This is a very large scale map. This particular map is at a scale of 1 in 24,000. So it's very large scale with uh, a lot of detail. And on this particular map, uh, one mile is about 2 and 3 quarter inches uh, approximately. But now I can't just take a, a ruler and lay it flat on the map and get an accurate measurement. Uh, that would only work if you are a bird and you can uh, just fly from one point to another. The reason for that is the terrain. We have to remember that when you're on the, the earth, the earth is not flat. And when you have the ups and downs of the hills, that is going to add distance to your travels. Alright guys, so... For this example, I'm going to show you a road that is on the map, and I know it's going to be a bit difficult for you to see in the video, but uh, try to bear with me. There's a forest road, which starts here about the tip of the knife, and you can see that it travels in this direction here to approximately this point right here. Let's say we want to find out the distance of this road. So as I mentioned on this map, one mile is about two and three quarter inches. However, I can't just use a flat ruler because you see this ruler measures in a straight line and the road kind of arcs around here. So I need to come up with another method. So one very easy method that I like to use is to get a piece of small string or perhaps some thread. I have some fine black thread here and I'm just going to start at the I'm going to place the end of the thread at the uh, end of this road here and I'm just going to try to work it following the road which of course is going with the terrain alright I'm going to pinch the end of the, the thread here so all of this thread represents the length of that road on the map. Alright, so once we've got our string measured out, we'll bring it over to the scale and stretch it out. And it looks like we're just under a mile and a half. 
just about a mile and a half. So using that string, we were able to determine that this road is about one and a half miles in length. Now that may not be 100% accurate, but certainly gives us a pretty good idea. All right, so I've shown you how you can use a piece of string or a piece of thread to determine the overall length of a particular trail or road or whatever route that you've selected that that you may plan to hike and you want to know the total distance. But let's take another point of view. Let's say you have a known distance that, uh, that you would like to hike, sort of, let's say, like the maximum distance that you want to go. And you want to take a look at your map and figure out some routes that may uh, keep you at or below that distance. What you can do is take your string and on the scale measure out whatever distance uh, you may need. And just as an example, I've taken this string here and on this map I've cut it so that this string represents four miles. So we could use this string to figure out a four mile loop on this map or if we want to do an out and back we would uh, could say an eight miles if you want to go four miles out and four miles back. But this string represents four miles. And so what I can do is I can place the string on the map, say at this trailhead here. This is where I may park my vehicle. And I can just follow the, the trails on the map and just keep working the string until I get to the end. And once I've gotten to the end of the string, I know that's the four miles. When I get to that point, I need to turn back if I do not want to exceed an eight mile hike. Or if I'm trying to do a loop, you know, I can uh, again go back to the trailhead, place uh, both ends at the trailhead, for example, and I can uh, just work this along the trails. And of course I can see on this map that there, there is no trail that exactly matches this length, but I could plan to hike to this point here and sort of do a bushwhack across here and link back up with this trail. I know you guys can't really see the details on the map, but I just want you to get the concept of what I'm doing. And in this way you can figure out your route for a four mile loop, or as I mentioned, an eight mile out and back with this string that is pre-cut to four miles. But of course, you know, you make the string whatever length that you're trying to do. Shorter, longer, it's totally up to you. Just want to get, give you the concept. So you can see that on this very large scale map, 1 in 24,000, and I'm using very thin thread here, and I'm still, it's a little tricky. You just sort of have to work it little sections at a time. But you can imagine if we were on a smaller scale uh, map that had less detail, this would be even more difficult. But again, uh, under no circumstance will this method give us an exact um, you know, an exact measurement of distance. It just gives us a pretty close approximation and gives us an idea so that we know what to expect and we are prepared when we go into the field. So guys, we've talked about it briefly in previous episodes and we're going to get into it in more detail in an upcoming episode of the series. But if you recall, when you look at your contour lines on your map, each line represents a specific elevation and the space between the lines is your contour interval. Just briefly, you'll recall that that is the difference in elevation from one line to another. So obviously the closer the lines are together, the steeper the terrain. You can see in this area there's quite a bit of space between the lines. Uh, therefore, this terrain, while certainly uh, pretty steep, it's much more gentle than in this area. You can see the lines are merging, almost merging here, and therefore we know in this area that this terrain is very steep, almost vertical. So we know these will be almost cliff-like features here in this area, whereas this side of the mountain is also steep but would be much more manageable than trying to navigate in this area. So you'll want to keep that in mind when you're planning a route or taking a look at your map. And what I want to touch on along those lines is that you can 
by uh, what is known as a slope gauge. It's a tool that uh, you basically, it's similar to a ruler. You place it on your map and where the spaces line up uh, between the lines, it will give you the percentage slope or the grade of steepness in that area. Now I don't actually have a slope gauge to show you how it works. For most uh, people it's not really going to be necessary to know the exact uh, percentage of grade. Uh, you, you may be more concerned with that if you are a, doing any kind of competition or your professional orienteering, for example. But for most typical hikers, uh, it, suffice it to know that an area like this is extremely steep and should be avoided, where an area where the lines are more separated is, is much more manageable. Uh, it may not be important to us to know the exact grade there. I just wanted to touch on that and let you know that there are slope gauges available. Uh, you just have to make sure that the gauge, your slope gauge, is for the same scale as the map that you plan on using it on. Okay guys, so while we are thinking about measuring slope and steepness, uh, it's a good moment to bring up the concept of elevation gain as well. I believe we're going to get into this subject in a little bit more detail later on in the series when we talk about route finding, but I just want to touch on it briefly here. Uh, now you can see this uh, basic crude artwork that I've done here, and what I'm trying to represent is, uh, you can see this line here, I'm going to say this is a trailhead at 1,000 feet above sea level, and let's say we're going to climb this mountain here, and the summit of the mountain you see is at 3,000 feet above sea level. So what I want to demonstrate is if we start out at 1,000 feet and we hike up this mountain to 3,000 feet, we have climbed an elevation of 2,000 feet, or our elevation gain on that hike will be 2,000 feet. Okay, so take a look at this uh, second graphic that I've created. You can see here I've got the same concept of starting out with a trailhead at 1,000 feet. And we're going to climb this mountain again to the summit of 3,000 feet. Now, if we start out at 1,000 feet and climb up to the summit at 3,000, that seems like, again, an elevation gain of 2,000 feet, correct? Well, not exactly. Take a look how the terrain is different in this area. We start out at 1,000 feet, and we climb up to this little summit here at 1,800, so we've gained 800 feet. But then we go back downhill for a while to 1,600 feet. And then from there we climb to 3,000. So here's an additional 1,400 feet of elevation gain combined with the 800 feet that we had at the beginning gives us a total of 2,200 feet of elevation gain on this hike. So we're still at the summit of 3,000 feet and we started at 1,000, but that's a simple example of how the elevation gain will be different depending on the terrain of your area and you need to take that into consideration when you are calculating elevation gain. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this segment, I'm going to discuss elevation gain in greater detail later on in the series. But just uh, for now, keep in mind that uh, it's not a matter of just subtracting the, the difference from your highest point and your lowest point along your journey. It's a bit more complicated than that. So I hope you guys found this video to be uh, interesting and at least a little bit informative. I hope you enjoyed watching. And as always, I hope you guys will leave some comments and feedback in the comments section down below the video. I always enjoy interacting with, uh, with you guys. And if you have another method which you use to measure distance on a map, please share it with us. I'm sure everyone would be interested. I know I certainly would like to hear about it. Thank you guys so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you on the trail.